Imagine your girlfriend was kidnapped, and to save her, you had to survive 12 life or death challenges. Would you be able to do it? Let's start at the beginning. John Cena is a police officer who lives with his girlfriend, Molly. Cena, along with his partner Hank, are out patrolling the city at night. At the same time, the FBI is tracking an international terrorist and weapons dealer named Miles Jackson. They are planning on capturing Jackson with the help of a man named Samuel who works with Miles Jackson. Samuel agrees to help the FBI in exchange for the release of his brother. Once Miles Jackson arrives to meet with Samuel, the plan gets derailed when Samuel reveals to Miles that the entire thing is set up by the FBI. Samuel then shoots Miles in the chest and tells the FBI he'll give them Miles if they release his brother. Samuel puts Miles in a van and drives away. As the FBI scrambles to catch them, it's revealed that Miles was wearing a bulletproof vest and both he and Samuel are working together. However, Miles ends up double-crossing Samuel and killing him. At the same time, John Cena and Hank are told to be on the lookout for Miles Jackson. Miles arrives at his destination and meets up with his girlfriend, and they get into a car and drive away. While stopped at a light, Cena sees Miles' girlfriend and recognizes her from a video that the FBI has of Jackson. This prompts John Cena and Hank to pull over the vehicle. Everything seems fine, but Cena wants to check the trunk of the car. When it opens, Miles is hiding inside and shoots at the two officers. Hank gets hurt, but John Cena decides to give chase on foot. While running, Cena accidentally drops his gun and can't retrieve it. Despite not having a weapon, John Cena continues to go after the criminals. He pushes a boat into the road, causing Miles' vehicle to crash into it. Miles' girlfriend starts running away, but accidentally gets hit by an oncoming vehicle and dies. Miles Jackson is then arrested, but warns John Cena that he will remember him. We then see John Cena wake up, and it's been exactly exactly one year since that night. Cena is still with his girlfriend, Molly, but their relationship is having some issues. Molly leaves to go to work while a plumber is fixing the couple's bathroom. Soon after, John Cena gets a call on his phone. The person calling is Miles Jackson, who says he's escaped prison and is spying on Cena and Molly. John Cena runs out of his home just before Miles is blown up with the plumber still inside. Jackson then tells John Cena that was round one, and since Cena took something from him that could never be replaced, Miles plans on doing the same to John Cena. John then rushes to try and find Molly, who is boarding a boat. John Cena just misses her and takes someone's car and tries to catch the boat. As he drives, Cena calls Hank and tells him what is happening. John Cena finally arrives where the boat stopped and meets up with his partner. Cena calls Molly's phone, but Miles Jackson answers. Miles has Molly with him and tells John Cena that if he wants to see his girlfriend alive, Cena needs to play a game called 12 rounds. If John Cena wins, he'll get Molly back. Round two just ended. Miles tells Cena that to complete round three, John needs to find a particular cell phone somewhere in the city before Miles calls it in 15 minutes. Miles tells John that he should start looking where they first met. Cena and Hank go to where they pulled over Miles' car one year ago. They discover spray painting on a building with a latitude and longitude, giving them a location to go to. As they are driving, Cena realizes that the coordinates lead to a fire station where John Cena's brother works. They get there right as the 15 minutes are up. Everyone listens and they hear a phone ringing at a nearby store. John Cena answers it and Miles congratulates them on figuring out the challenge and has awarded Cena extra time in the next round. Miles then says that for round four, Cena will need to get two deposit boxes out of the New Orleans Savings and Loan building, which is on fire. The boxes are located on the top floor, and John Cena has 20 minutes to accomplish this round. Cena heads to the building and climbs towards the fire. He gets inside and finds the two boxes that Miles wants. John Cena immediately gets a call from Miles, who tells him that round five has begun. One of the boxes is a bomb, while the other is a clue for the next round. Cena needs to get to Nickel Street in less than seven minutes, otherwise the bomb goes off. Going down the stairs will take too long, so John Cena decides to use a roll of cable to climb out of the window. He manages to get out of the building, and with about four minutes left, Cena gets in a fire truck and drives to Nickel Street. He just barely makes it, and hears a noise coming from one of the boxes. John Cena knows that's the one with the bomb, and throws it into the water. The clue to round six is in the other box, and Miles tells Cena if he's able to figure it out, he might get to see his girlfriend. While the box is being opened, the FBI gives Cena a new phone. They tell John Cena if he can keep Miles Jackson on the line for 30 seconds, they'll be able to track his location. Cena puts the phone away, and inside the box is a key card for the Hotel Monteleone. John Cena and the FBI head over there and enter the room the key card is for. Inside, John Cena finds pictures of Molly tied up on the bed in the hotel room. The FBI looks at the security camera footage and sees Miles. He's holding a sign that says, We are 
are still here. They also see Miles talking to a hotel employee. Cena finds the employee, whose name is Willie, and he shows John the place he led Miles to, an old elevator that goes to the roof of the hotel. Cena and Willie go up the elevator until a small charge goes off that stops it. They try to call for help and find a small laptop with a video of Molly reading a message from Miles. She tells John Cena and Willie that the elevator is going to fall in 60 seconds and only one of them can survive. The timer begins and Cena opens the hatchet to get to the roof of the elevator. Cena helps get Willie out as well, but it's not easy. John Cena grabs onto the side of the elevator shaft and extends his arm to the man. The timer runs out though and Willie plummets to his death. Cena makes it to safely, but is emotionally drained. Just then, Miles Jackson calls. The FBI reminds John Cena to keep Miles on the phone for 30 seconds so they can trace his call. Cena answers, but Miles knows what they are doing and hangs up before the FBI can track him. Miles calls back and warns John Cena about trying to trace his calls. He also reveals that the clue to round 7 is in the hotel lobby in a picture of a lonely man. Cena figures out the clue and finds a note that says Claiborne and Toulouse, which are the names of two streets in the city. Miles calls John Cena again and tells him to go to the location alone. Miles also says that Cena may have a 50-50 chance of having the time of his life. John agrees and goes to where the two streets intersect. He sees a bus numbered 5050 and realizes that's where he needs to go. Once on the bus, John Cena sees Molly but discovers she has a bomb strapped to her body. Miles is also on the bus and calls Cena and Molly over. He handcuffs John Cena to the bus and reveals that for round 7, John Cena just needs to let Miles walk away. Additionally, Miles has a device that will kill Molly and everyone on the bus if his finger isn't touching it. Miles also hands John Cena an envelope with a clue to the next round. At the same time, Cena hears through his earpiece that the FBI is going to try and snipe Miles. John Cena grabs Miles and Molly and saves them from the sniper's bullets. The bus stops and Miles escapes with Molly. The FBI arrives and frees John Cena from the cuffs. While recovering, Cena meets up with Hank who tells John that he found a man named Anthony DeLuso who helped Miles kidnap Molly. Hank goes to find DeLuso while John Cena begins round 8. The envelope Miles gave John Cena on the bus has 5 phone numbers inside of it. Four of the numbers are wired to bombs that will explode when called, but one number will disarm all of them. Cena has 60 seconds to call the right number. He and an FBI agent try to figure out the code, but run out of time, and Cena calls a random number. Miles answers and tells John Cena that he chose incorrectly, and the brakes have now been disabled on a streetcar. Round 9 has now begun. John Cena has to stop the streetcar before it crashes into a crowd of people. Cena and the FBI agent drive to the streetcar while Hank finds and starts following Anthony DeLuso. Once they arrive, John Cena puts his vehicle in front of the runaway streetcar. He then climbs out and goes to the top of the streetcar. He tries to break the rod that is powering the car, but it doesn't work. John Cena gets back inside his vehicle and crashes it into a power transformer that starts to slow down the streetcar. It's still moving too fast though, so Cena runs to clear people out of the way just before the streetcar crashes. Miles then calls Cena to tell him that round 10 was Hank taking Anthony DeLuso. Now round 11 is Miles taking Hank. John Cena tries to call Hank, but it goes to voicemail. Hank has followed Anthony DeLuso to a factory, but gets caught. Deluso has Hank at gunpoint, but realizes that Miles double-crossed him, and an explosion goes off, killing both Deluso and Hank. John Cena is heartbroken to hear the news. Miles calls Cena to tell him it's time for the final round, round 12. All Cena has to do is find his girlfriend. She has a bomb attached to her body that can only be deactivated with Cena's fingerprint. Miles Jackson also tells John Cena that Cena should pay a visit to his girlfriend to say he's sorry. Cena and the FBI agents head to the cemetery where Miles' girlfriend is buried. However, as they are driving, Cena gets a call from another detective who says things aren't adding up. The detective discovered that all five phone numbers were attached to the streetcar. Also, at the hotel, the elevator fell five seconds early. Cena then realizes that the hotel employee, Willie, was always meant to die. The pieces start to come together, and John Cena and the agents realize that this is never about revenge, it was about money. Willie had a second job as a security guard for the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Miles uses Willie's ID card to get inside and impersonate a guard. He then steals $100 million and dumps it into the sewer. Then, using the fire truck John Cena had used earlier, Miles siphons out the money. All the other rounds were meant as a distraction. As Cena realizes Miles' real plan, he figures out that Molly isn't at the cemetery, she's still with Miles Jackson. With the money in a bag, Miles heads to the hospital where Molly works. He uses 
uses Molly and her ID card to get to the roof of the hospital. Miles' plan is to use the helicopter to escape, with Molly as the pilot. Cena makes it to the top of the hospital just as Miles and Molly are leaving. Cena runs and manages to jump onto the helicopter. Miles tries to take out John Cena, but Cena fights back. The two start brawling in the helicopter, doing damage to it. Cena finally manages to knock out Miles, but the helicopter is going down. Molly tries to land, but Miles has the bomb from the bus and activates it. With 30 seconds before the helicopter explodes, John Cena grabs his girlfriend and they jump into a pool on top of a nearby building. They land safely just when the bomb goes off, killing Miles Jackson. John Cena and Molly kiss, knowing they have survived 12 rounds. Many years after this movie, John Cena would appear in F9. To see him and other WWE wrestlers in the Fast and the Furious movies, watch the video on screen.